Hi, and thank you for joining us here at Tax Talk UK, where we talk about all things tax and um, other important aspects of running your um, small business, being self-employed. And today we are going to be um, continuing with our bite-sized series of um, MTD software demos and showing you how to account for CIS in your QuickBooks software. Um, before we talk about that, if I could please ask you to take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you'll easily be able to refer back to this information if you should need to, as well as finding other information that we have available, including other demos on how to use your software. So I'm just going to pop here into the demo, um, the demo company. Um, now, the first thing to uh, mention is if you are um, recently registered as CIS or using QuickBooks for the first time, you will need to turn the function on um, within your QuickBooks software. And the reason for this is, of course, if you had every function available in your software and things that weren't relevant um, to you, then that could um, that's more things to be um, to, to cause confusion. Um, so the CIS will be turned off automatically by default unless you turn it on. So you will remember that to get to your company settings is the cog here on the top right hand side. And we want account and settings um, into advanced. And um, then you will see enable CIS. So we've already um, turned this on in the demo software, um, but you would just click the edit and you will need to put your um, details as a relevant. Now, if you are a subcontractor, your UTR number is all that's going to be relevant. You won't have the employer's PAYE or the accounts office reference, um, and you will um, tick the box to say you're a, sub a CIS subcontractor, and then the software will know that that's why you haven't um, provided those. Um, if you are a contractor, then it will be the PAYE reference number and the accounts office reference number that will be the uh, most important. And then you will just say, and that will have turned on the function in your software. So um, if we look first as if you are a CIS subcontractor, so you are the one invoicing and you are going to have CIS deducted from your um, invoices. Now we do have other guidance um, on CIS, um, being a CIS subcontractor and what you need to do and how you go about it. So we're not going to go into the um, to that detail in this um, video. We're going to simply look at how you do the things that you need to do in your um, in your QuickBooks software. So actually, you'll be pleased to know that um, QuickBooks does make um, accounting for CIS really easy. And we do that by the use of um, categories and codes. So um, as I mentioned, we're talking at this point in time about a subcontractor. So we are going to be wanting to invoice our contractor who is going to be making the um, deductions for CIS. So we simply raise an invoice in, a, in the um, in the normal way. Now, one thing that we do need to um, mention is that when you um, set up the customer, you will need to let QuickBooks know that um, they are a contractor, so that so that they um, so that QuickBooks knows that you will, will be using the CIS codes and um, categories. So we're going to click the box here. So remember, in this scenario, we are the subcontractor raising the invoice to the contractor. So therefore, our, um, our CIS um, supplier um, is, a, is a contractor. So we're going to save that. So now you will see that when we come down to the product and service box, if we start to type CIS, we now have these CIS products and services that weren't there um, previously. So you will um, know yourself which rate of deduction is going to be appropriate to term, dependent on whether you have registered um, for CIS. So if you remember, um, if you are registered with HMRC 
um, as a subcontractor, um, then you will have 20% deducted unless you have applied for growth status, which gives you 0%. And if you haven't registered, then your deductions will be at um, 30%. And if you're not sure about that, if you just revisit, pop into our playlist, look at um, see up, look for the CIS um, playlist and you will find the information in there and that will give you more information on, on that. So um, for this purposes, I'm going to assume that you know um, you know what I'm what I'm talking about in in that regard. So um, so now we're going to put our um, quantity and rate in the same as we would do um, for for um, any other invoice. And now you can see down here, that um, QuickBooks has automatically applied a CIS deduction at the rate that we've put in the product. So we've we've told QuickBooks that we're invoicing this um, this person for five hundred pounds, um, and it's C and it's to be deducted at twenty percent for CIS, and it's automatically deducted the hundred pounds um, CIS. So therefore, that will show on your invoice to your um to your customer but also the other important thing is that then when they pay the amount having deducted the cis the invoice will be expecting the reduced payment so it makes it much easier to um to be able to um to do that so let's um just for a moment um assume that we're talking about a non vat registered um, subcontractor just so you can see so we can talk about the how how the actual CIS side of it um, so you will also be aware that um, if you are recharging materials to your customer then no deduction is um, applied to the cost of the materials so um, just to remind that we are talking about materials that you physically are getting charged for so if, for example, um, one, one example would be um, a company um, hiring out scaffolding um, equipment. So if, um, if they are hiring the actual equipment from another company, then, they, then the um, cost of that hire would be um, CIS materials for this purpose. If they are charging to hire their own equipment and so there's no recharge cost to them it would fall under the cis for um for labor so if we say that we have um cis materials of 100 pounds so you can see here that in the bottom there's been no um no change to the cis um for that amount so the software knows that you're going that you're charging 500 pounds labor which is um subject to cis at 20 percent and you're charging 100 pounds which is materials which is not subject to um cis so therefore we have a total of 600 pounds and um with 100 pounds deduction and the balance due is therefore 500 pounds and that's what it will be expecting the payment um, in so once we get to this point you would just finalize your um, invoice the same as any other any other invoice so just some um, key things to um, again to recap on it's important that you've turned on the CIS function in your software it's important that you've entered your UTR number so when you are invoicing your um, your person that they have the UTR number on your invoice because that'd be important because they will need that to verify your CIS status with HMRC. Um, and then it's important that you differentiate between the, um, the labour and the materials. Now, it's important to note that when, um, when your um, customer comes to pay you, they will themselves be verifying with HMRC what rate um, is to be deducted and, and they will be applying that rate, not necessarily what is on your invoice. So you'd like to think that if, um, for example, you put 20% on the invoice and, um, and you didn't verify, so they were required to deduct 30%, you would like to think they would come back to you um, before they process um, that invoice. So it, it is useful to have that on the invoice. And as I say, when you come to match. Um, so, so you'll remember earlier, I said, let's just um, imagine that this is a non-VAT registered subcontractor. 
um, just for the purpose of showing you how the actual CIS deduction works. So, so now, of course, you will be aware. And again, we have an, another video on this in the CIS playlist. If you're not sure, if you are VAT registered um, and, and your work is falling within the scope of CIS, then you are also required to operate the reverse charge. And you'll be pleased to hear that QuickBooks will also um, help you um, with this. So let's now change the um, VAT code because we want to add VAT onto the invoice, um, but we want to add it at the reverse charge, which if you remember, will be actually not showing that VAT on the invoice, but just letting your customer know that it's subject to the reverse charge and that therefore they need to pay that um, and reclaim it at the same time. So now um, if you um, if you go into your um, managed VAT rates, you will um, again, um, the same as the CIS, only things that are relevant to your um, business will be turned on. So you, you have more options to turn on. So we are going to select um, and turn on the um, reverse charge for um, CIS. And I am actually going to turn that one off to avoid us any confusion because we only want the um, reverse charge. So what you will also remember with the reverse charge is that it's charged at the same rate that it would be if it was outside of the reverse charge. So if, if it's work that's subject to VAT at 20%, you're going to charge reverse charge at 20%. If it's work that's um, charge that that's a five percent is applicable then you're going to charge reverse charge five percent so now in the vat code if we start typing reverse rc for the reverse charge you'll see that we've now got these um, rates available to us um, these codes so we've got 20 percent reverse charge cis so we're going to select that and um, that applies to um, both materials and labor and therefore that will then tell your um, tell your um, customer that you have applied the reverse charge at whatever um, rate is applicable. So this is how um, in, um, in QuickBooks you deal with your invoicing of your um, reverse charge. And then, as I mentioned before, when you come to receive the payment, the invoice is going to already have had the CIS deducted and QuickBooks will be keeping um, keeping a, um, a record of how much CIS you've had um, deducted. So when you come to the end of the tax year and you come to do your um, self-assessment tax return, then um, QuickBooks will be able to provide you with the figure um, of how much you need to enter as how much CIS has been deducted throughout the year. So as you can see, um, this is um, a, a, a really um, straightforward way to, um, to be able to manage your CIS whilst also using um, MTD software. Um, now, of course, we are talking from the, um, from the perspective of the CIS subcontractor, and um, as, uh, and if you are the contractor receiving an invoice that's um, that's subject to um, CIS, then in exactly the same way, um, you use codes and um, categories to be able to account for this. So you would um, enter a um, bill, um, CIS bill. And again, we would need to tell um, QuickBooks that um, this um, person is a subcontractor. And now in this box here, we would be putting their UTR number um, and their national insurance number and their verification number and which rate um, the ver verification um, confirms. Um, so um, I'm going to presume that this person is um, verified um, and um, in for the purposes of the demonstration. So you again, you can see here now we've um, set that um, person up and said that they are a CIS subcontractor. We now have the CIS categories available to us. So we would um, we would be looking for um, on the right hand side, we would be looking to make sure that their expense categories 
and that we're not inadvertently um, posting to um, to some income categories. Um, this is a a little bit of a um, a, a, a sort of a, an area where confusion can be caused um, and if you find that you come to do your CIS contractor return and the figures aren't as you expected it's quite likely that you could have inadvertently entered a, um, an income um, code rather than an expense and hopefully um, QuickBooks will be able to make improvements to um, to, to do something to take away that confusion. So um, so we are going to um, pop, pop this in and um, much as much as you saw on the um, subcontractor how the CIS was automatically deducted, um, you can see that that has done um, exactly the same with uh, from the contractor um, perspective. And um, then using the taxes uh, module in your QuickBooks, once you get to the end of the um, payroll month and as a contractor, um, you are needing to submit your, um, your CIS return, you will then be able to do that from the software, which we will look at that in more detail. I just wanted to show you today how to use the categories and the codes to be able to account for the um, for the CIS deductions and also for the reverse charge um, VAT. So hopefully that that has helped. Um, if you found this video helpful, please do um, take a moment to hit the like button. Um, that helps us to understand um, what content people are finding the most helpful. And please do subscribe to our channel and um, what you can then fi find more easily at other um, bite-sized demos to help you with your software. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.